Yeah. In fact, I, I would just say that one of the things that uh, we learned somewhat early in this was that there was a kind of, um, we call it today, we call it conflict fundraising. Uh, when the when animal rights is involved rather than regular animal welfare concerns being involved, there's a particular MO to uh, the campaign. And the campaign, for one thing, it requires a villain. In order for them to raise money, you have to have a villain. And in order to raise money, they have to have a victim. So there's always a picture of a sad animal or a story about some terrible thing happening to an animal. And then the animal rights group sort of rides into town on their white horse to save the day. And people don't maybe notice until afterwards that they didn't actually do anything to help animals. So that's a real fundamental difference right there between, between animal rights and animal welfare. Is the people who live and work with animals, whether they're hobby dog breeders, whether they're commercial breeders, whether they are research scientists, people who keep conservation centers and look after animals in that setting, or, or cattlemen, these people live and work with animals every day and they are deeply involved with and care deeply about the welfare of those animals. So what we were seeing was a completely different variety of uh, stated concern about animals that didn't really result in any improvements for animals. Uh, to give you another example, during Katrina a few years ago when we had all the terrible flooding down there, the national fundraising groups, the national animal rights groups, went into town and started passing out t-shirts with their logo on it uh, so that they could get the cameras rolling and show that they had all of these people working. Well, there were lots and lots of people who did real animal welfare that were from local humane societies or from local uh, and even distant kennel clubs that had gotten in their trucks and gone down there at their own expense to actually help. So huge difference between what is promoted through the media eye of uh, the animal rights fundraising campaigns and, and the actual people who are doing the work who are on the welfare side. So that brings me, it's not in here, but it, it, as far as the media, do you feel like the media plays a, a certain role and oh their God. bias? and? I, I don't know. I mean, I think when I first started out, I thought that everyone in the media was an activist. But now I realize everyone in the media is simply looking for ratings. And the stories that the activists bring to them, that the animal rights activists bring to them, are all, they say, if it bleeds, it leads. And they always bring them stories that have enough sensation to them that they're worth putting on, if nothing else, as a filler. But, uh, and, and all of these issues are complicated. Real care for animals. Uh, I mean, we work with people who have spent not just, you know, an extra few years getting a vet degree, veterinary degree, but also a PhD. These, the issues, how to actually care for animals and make real improvements, they're complicated. So they don't play very well to the media. They don't play as easily as the uh, sort of black and white issues that the activists bring forward. And, and I wanted to say, too, on this, what we call conflict fundraising model, villain, victim, vindicator, um, that this is, if you really understand their modus operandi, you would understand that um, this is really the only way they can operate because they don't make a product or provide a service. This is their, this is how they make money, is they make money by, this is where I say it's a hate movement, uh, they make money by disparaging people. And again, because these issues are complicated, they don't bother to say, it's just these few, this small minority of people within this community that are causing this trouble. When they go after a bad guy, let's say within dog breeding or a farmer that's not taking care of his animals, they're very, very good at making it look like it's the entire activity, like all farmers treat their dogs this way. Isn't it terrible? Um, and so in that regard, um, disparagement is their number one tool, right? In order to raise money, somebody else has to be bad because they don't do anything good for anyone or they do so little compared to the money they raise that it's, um, let me back up and say that again maybe, but am I making sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, villain, um, victim, vindicator, no product, no service, fundraising all the way. 